for fans to log on to fanspointofview.com. The website where you can find out more about your favorite professional athletes. And remember, fans, you can also order your favorite sports memorabilia all on fanspointofview.com. And welcome to beautiful Waller Stadium here in gorgeous Manhattan Beach, California. I'm Chris Lee alongside with Jeremy Sadowski, and we're here to bring you exciting top class high school football action as your Maricos Mustangs take on Losinger. Good evening, fans. I'm Chris Lee, and along with top exciting action, we'll be keeping you up to date as the night progresses on fellow Bay League action as the Bay League title race is heating up and on a very special homecoming night, Mustangs are gonna be taking on Losinger in what on paper should be a pretty easy contest for the Mustangs. But as we all know, paper doesn't always pan out. Sometimes the games get a little bit tighter than expected. Mustangs, so far this season, have had a pretty balanced attack, but the last couple of weeks have started to see that balance shift back to the tradition of the Mustang ground attack as uh, running back Britt Nurman has really taken over with 712 yards rushing. Britton leads with eight rushing touchdowns as well as one uh, touchdown receiving nine touchdowns on the team. The focus has definitely gone towards Britt Nurman. Jeremy, is that a good thing for the Mustangs or are we missing something in the passing game? Well, Chris, the Mustangs' offensive line has also been a key reason for the shift to the more um, focused running attack as the offensive line has been blowing out holes for the last few weeks. Now, as far as losing is concerned, they run a double wing T offense similar to an option attack. However, it's a very condensed, no receiver offensive formation so like the option if the mustang defense stays within their responsibilities it's a pretty easy offense to stop because of its one dimensional of course that's definitely one thing the mustangs do have to be uh, concerned about on their own offensive side is not getting too one dimensional but what does help is even though the focus has gone towards the running game don't forget fans Kevin Kelly is still out there at wide receiver and as always a major threat to bust out at any time. Well, speaking of busting out, here on the Friday before th uh, Halloween, the Mustangs are busting out onto the field and they are pumped and excited for tonight's contest. The captains have already met Field position has been decided, and you can see a little uh, extra excitement in tonight's air because of homecoming, which we will be showing you clips of during halftime. Yeah, with homecoming, it reminds me of our homecoming, Chris, when the lights went out twice during play. Once during an extra point attempt, and the other uh, during a kickoff, I believe. We made that point after attempt, by the way. The attempt to kick off will be re-kicked off. Joe Houston, short kick to Sion Tuli on the return, stopped. Quickly by the Mustangs uh, defense, nice job. Only gave about six yards on the return. Ball is stopped and spotted at the 26 yard line. First down and 10, losing it. And losing it opens with the pass. Looking deep and having a man wide open deep on the right hand side is losing her all the way down 
<laughs> from tw from their 26 to the Mustangs 25. Quick strike for losing her on the opening play of this contest, and they are already in great field position. Losing her now on the right, and oh, big hit. Britt Nerman coming up from his linebacking safety position with the big hit, immediately stopping losing her's back. Only about one yard gain on the play. It's gonna bring up a second down, and I'll call it a long eight. Kenneth Ruffin, quarterback for losing her, under center. And Ruffin heads off, straight up the middle, and still driving is, of course, the uh, running back, Taylor. Got about three yards on the play. It's going to bring up now third down and about four for losing her. Ball spotted at the 20-yard line, and... Back to pass, losing her, and oh, had a man wide open, but Jazz couldn't hold on to the ball. Robin. Kenneth Ruffin dropped back and had his man, but Jazz couldn't deliver the rock to Nathan Springer. Gonna bring up a fourth down situation now for the Olympians. Oh. Ruffin now on the rollback, he's looking middle. He pump fakes, he still has the ball, and he is thrown down. Oh. Jeremy, what happened on that play? Well, Chris, we see the quarterback slash linebacker, Eric Esparza, with great penetration and a sack. It appears that there was a face mask on one of the offensive linemen grabbing at number 66, Justin Reese. Either way, a huge play for the Mustangs defense early in this contest on fourth down. Coming up with the stop and getting the ball now on the two run downs. Mustangs will take over an offense first down and 10. Quarterback Esparza hands off to number 31, Britton Norman. Britton gets a little bit of a hole and is able to get to the outside and turn that corner. Finally knocked out of bounds right that at the field right marker. Down. Let's see how the officials spot it. Either way, a good run. Britain able to use the combination of speed and power to get to the outside on a second down and short play. As Britain again, Britain right up the middle, got more than enough for the first down. Got about six yards on the play, first down and 10 Mustangs. This, of course, is the Mustangs opening drive of this contest. Losing her did get one big play, but Mustangs tightened up on D, got the ball back in their offense. Now it's Britt Nerman running hard again, fighting his way forward, about an eight yard gain right up the middle of the field. It's gonna bring up second down and two now. Mustangs line looking good so far this contest. You give Britton Urban holes, he will run through them and he'll find that end zone. Mustangs now. Looks like that may have been Steven Ronaldo. In fact, it was right up the middle, but he was met immediately. It's going to bring up third down and short for the Mustangs. And this time it's the QB keeper right up the middle. And boy, has that play ever worked very effectively for the Mustangs, especially with the large Eric Esparza in that quarterback. Eric, of course, a 6'3", 230-pound uh, quarterback, uses that size to his advantage. Now it's Britt Urban using the speed to his advantage, and it's finally knocked down. First down and 10, Mustangs. Yeah, Chris, we get to see a great block here by number 46, Alex Probosco, springing Britt Nertman on that long run. Great job by the Mustang offense, blocking from offensive line to the fullback, and great running by the senior tailback, Britt Nertman. First down, Mustangs. Eric Esparza now under center on first down and 10. Drops back, hands off to Britt Newman on the right-hand side. Power right formation. And works it for about six yards. 
And most of that game was all the push by his offensive front. Justin Reese, of course, getting a big push out there, giving a lot of open room there for uh, Britton. And Britton again, edging closer and closer. Actually, I'm sorry, that was Eric Esparza that time on the uh, QB keeper. One of the favorite plays by the Mustangs is quarterback Esparza will take a step back, let his running back lead the way, and then he'll step up and follow him right up the same hall. And that time, that's just a straight QB keeper. Esparza powers his way forward. That 230-pound frame earned the Mustangs first down and goal from the one-yard line. They will have four attempts to get this thing in there. And they only need one on that play. Again, Eric Esparza on the QB keeper. Touchdown, Mustang. Yeah, Chris, Eric Esparza is looking more like A.C. Santani every game with those quarterback keepers. That's what he's and Joe Houston's kick is up high, straight, and good. Make that score 7 to nothing. Your Mustangs leave this contest here in the first quarter. Joe Houston's kickoff is up, is high, it's taken at about the 12 and dropped, but picked up again by Lusinger and a great job. Britton Ertman out there for the Mustangs as well as Trevor Koppel, both combined to make a great diving tackle, taking advantage of the uh, back man for Lusinger who dropped the uh, kickoff. Finally tackled at the 12 yard line, losing her now on first and 10. And there's a big hole up the middle. This one has trouble written all over it. That one also has touchdown written all over it as JC Taylor pounds his way in for the touchdown. Marked that one up as an 86 yard touchdown run for losing her, JC Taylor. Right up the middle of the Mustangs defense. The Olympians now with the chance to tie. Or actually, I'm sorry, go up by two. They are running the play and two point conversion attempt is close. It looks like Mustangs may have stopped it. In fact, they did. Mustangs defense comes up big. Stopping the two point conversion attempt. Mustang still with the lead in this contest, 7-6, as we're here in the first quarter. <laughs> Let's see, uh, offsides looks like against the Olympians. We are going to re-kick this one. And don't know if I can even really call that much of a kick, but <laughs> Mustangs front line people uh, feel that one. Stuart Stackowick out there uh, fielding what was basically a pop fly, an infield fly on that one. I think they've had to call the infield fly rule. Handoff now goes to Britton Irwin. Britton with a nice gain. Finally brought down by the 22-yard carry, Britton Ehrman. Mustangs running attack is definitely looking strong so far tonight. Combination of Britton Ehrman and Eric Esparza on the ground is definitely working. Mustangs yet to go to the air. Nothing but attacks on the ground and why stop when you're getting eight, nine yards of carry? This time it's Stackwick out there on the left-hand side, and he gets the first down with a 14-yard carry. Yeah, Chris, great job by the misdirection on the Mustang offense, faking to the right and then running to the left, pulling the losing her defense and getting yet another first down for the Mustang offense. 
Mustangs continue to drive, leading this contest seven to six here in the first quarter. Handoff this time it looks like that's for Bosco out there. Of course, uh, Alex had a breakout game, if you will, last week. Came into last week's contest with only two carries, ended with 10 carry, carries so far on the season now, and 61 yards, averaging a big 6.1 yards per carry. But this time, it's guess who? Britt Lerman on the left-hand side. Britton cuts up field, gets more than enough for the first down. First down and 10, Mustangs. Of course, Britton on that 720, 712 yards rushing is averaging 5.6 per carry. Got about almost exactly that on that carry. Got about six yards. Gonna bring up second down and about four now for the Mustangs. Ball spotted at the four. Hand off to Britt Norman again, and Britton walks in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Mustangs. Yeah, Chris, we got to see another great block by the center, number 65, senior J.D. Kasuli, as Britt Nurtman was literally able to walk into the end zone. He could have even moonwalked into the end zone. It was so open. And the field goal attempt is good. The Mustangs lead this contest 14 to 6. Of course, now that's nine rushing touchdowns for Britt Nerman and 10 total, including one receiving. Britton has definitely found a knack of getting into the end zone. He continues that trend tonight. Mustangs lead this contest 14 to 6. Joe Houston now on the kickoff. Kick is falls short and bounces out of bounds. Ball bounce out at the 15, so we'll have to double check the spot. And in fact, they will re-kick just a little farther back, and it's a low kick again, taken by one of the headmen for losing her. And he is brought down immediately. Nice job out there by the Mustangs. Timothy Hymanson, the 5'8 junior, gets a chance to make a big impact in tonight's contest here on homecoming night. Losing her will take over now. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Losing her in that wing tee. There's a quick pitch back to the uh, tailback who finds a hole. Again, another huge uh, gain on the ground and tumbling and stumbling into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown losing her. That's number 11 for them. I don't have there. It's a Sion Kalia with the big run. That's two consecutive touchdown runs of 50 yards or more by the Olympians. Losing her again going for two. And this time they do convert. Jason Taylor goes in for the two-point Yeah, it's JC Taylor in for the two-point conversion. That knots this contest up at 14 apiece. Jeremy, what's going on in this first half? So far, the big plays are going in the direction of losing. Yeah, Chris, as we again see another short kick by losing or taken by one of the upmen. It appears that Coach uh, Defensive Coordinator Ray Lee is going to have to make some defensive adjustments at halftime to stop that losing or double wing T offense. Mustangs now on the ground. Misdirection play works for about two yards. It's going to bring up second down and eight. Olympians so far tonight with three big plays of 50 yards or more out of the backfield. One, one for uh, pass reception and two on the ground. Mustangs defense will definitely have to tighten up and make some adjustments. Third down and two play now. 
And the handoff to Stackowick, who runs on the left-hand side, makes a couple nice cuts, and is finally down at the 45-yard line, just past midfield. Looks like a losing your player is down. The good news for the Mustangs is, although Losinger is definitely getting the bigger plays, the Mustangs are getting the more consistent play as they're eating away yardage and yardage at a time with this powerful Russian attack. Jeremy, what do you have to say so far about the Mustangs ground game? Chris, it's been incredible the last few weeks the offensive line play that the Mustangs have shown, as well as the, the running from the tailback, Britton Ertman. Britton has been making some great cuts and just using his incredible speed to great, gain massive yardage on the ground. I think we may have jinxed him on that one is uh, Britton trying to use that speed to get around the corner, not able to do so, ends up losing a couple yards. Going to bring up second down and 12 now for the Mustangs. Eric Esparza under center, hands off to Irwin on the left-hand side, and there's that speed and power you're talking about, Jeremy, as Britton spins his way forward. Just shy of the first down marker. It's going to bring up third down and one. Mustang so far perfect on third down conversions. And it's a QB keeper. Esparza on the right hand side. Finally brought down. First down and 10 Mustangs. Looks like that play should get us to the end of the first quarter. This game is tied 14 apiece. And we'll be right back. Remember fans to log on to fanspointofview.com, the website where you can find out more about your favorite professional athletes. And remember fans, you can also order your favorite sports memorabilia all on fanspointofview.com. And welcome back to exciting second quarter action as your Mustangs and the losing Olympians are tied 14 apiece. But the Mustangs are driving that again on the ground by, as you see right there, Britton Erman. Britton with another fine game so far tonight. We are trying to get a hole, trying to see if we can get some out of town scoreboard action here to keep you updated to the other Bay League action as Mustangs mathematically still have a shot at the Bay League title. And Britt Nerman dances his way forward, should have enough for the first down. And I believe we do have some scores in. Jeremy, what's up? All right, Chris, over at Redonda, Redonda's leading West Torrance 13 to nothing. And over at Peninsula, it's South up seven to six. And it's the Mustangs driving and almost getting into the end zone as Eric Esparza on the QB keeper. Eric saw a big, huge on the right-hand side. Cut up field, got a little banged up on the play. He is limping back. We'll have to see if that affects him tonight. But meantime, it's Britt Nerman literally walking into the end zone for the second time tonight. He didn't get touched by anybody. His linemen were in the uh, end zone. They had such a big push. Touchdown, Mustangs. And Joe Houston with the kick is good. Make that score now 21 to 14. Your Mustangs lead this contest here in the second quarter. Jimmy, we saw another great push by the Mustangs offensive line. Has that been the key so far in these past three weeks? Definitely, Chris. The Mustang offensive line, led by a senior, J.D. Kasuli, has just been absolutely incredible these last few weeks as we entered league play. 
despite the adversity that this team has faced, senior leadership on the offensive line and in the form of Britt Norman have definitely stepped up and really taken over for the Mustangs. Let's see if they can continue that trend tonight and close this game out as they lead 14 to 20, or 21 to 14, but losing on the big strike, had a man deep, but Britt Norman made a diving play to try to deflect the attention of the attentive receiver. Ball falls incomplete, second down and 10, losing here. Don't forget fans, stay tuned for a special halftime presentation. Piecing together signs of tonight's exciting homecoming action. Losing around the straight running play right up the middle. Got about nine yards on the play. It's going to be up third down and short. Third and one to be specific. Losing her now on the third down play. And ooh, that one's going to be close. We're going to have to check the spot on that one. Hard to tell if he was able to get that first or not. Mustangs did a great job on defense. Losing her now on the straight run up the middle. Got about six yards on the play. Brings up second down now for losing her. Second down and about four. Losing her on the one play. Straight up the middle is Taylor, who is bouncing to the outside and has a corner, has to angle to the end zone, and finally knocked out of bounds. Great play by number five, Bruce Robinson. Bruce made a great play just to knock Taylor out of bounds because Taylor had his eye on the end zone and was trying to do everything he could to get there, but Bruce Robinson said no, shut the door on him. First down and 10, Olympia. And Olympians now on the QB keeper. Quarterback, Quarterback Ruffin able to get about two yards on the play. Mustangs defense trying to tighten up as losing her continues to get big plays from her offense. And it looks like there was early motion. Losing her tight end looked like he got started well before everyone else. That's an illegal motion penalty against the Olympians. Bring them back five yards. It's going to bring up first down and 15. <laughs> Ruffin under center. Since man in motion. Rolls out left and still has the ball. Throws left and is intercepted by the Mustangs. That's Britt Merman on the interception. He is on the right-hand side, tries to make a couple nice cuts. Finally brought down at the 32-yard line. Turnover caused by a great defensive play by Britt Merman. Jeremy, what happened on that play? Well, Chris, we see a great play by Britt Nertman leading the quarterback all the way and making a great interception and then using his speed to go right down the sidelines and set up the Mustangs in great field position down at the Olympian 30 yard line. And great play on coverage by number 12, Stuart Stackwick, who was the defensive back in coverage, got his hand in the face of the intended receiver. I don't think he even saw the ball coming. Good thing Britton Norman did, because Britton got the Mustangs in good field position and stopped what was a pretty long, potentially scoring drive by the Olympians. As you hear the fans giving their appreciation to Stewart's efforts in tonight's contest, definitely playing a big role as he gets the carry. Finally brought down by the Olympians. Stewart definitely getting some carries in tonight's action. That's the second week in a row now. You've seen someone really step up on the offensive backfield side and really help uh, give a little lift. Give a little break to uh, Britton Nerman as Britton playing both, both ways, offense and defense, needs some uh, rest out there. 
Eric Esparza tackled after about a three yard gain on the QB keeper. Second down and short for the Mustangs. As I believe that was Bill Farmer out there on the, uh, the uh, down marker. Esparza with the handoff to Britt Nerman who is dragged down by his jersey. Only got about one yard on the play. As we see uh, early preparations for homecoming beginning to take place. The fans are getting excited now. And Esparza on the misdirection play. And again, Lusinger's defense comes out big. Mustang's ground attack on three consecutive carries, only able to get six yards, brings up a fourth down and four situation. That means it's Joe Houston's time. Of course, Joe Houston with the game winning field goal just a few weeks ago has an attempt here. The kick is up, high enough, deep enough, straight enough, it's good. Make that score now, 24 to 14. Your Mustangs lead this contest here in the second quarter. Yeah, Chris, Joe Houston is perfect on the season from field goals and point after attempts. We talk about streaks often with this uh, Mustang team. That's one that the Mustangs are definitely proud to uh, continue. Losing or trying to get a little tricky as the Mustangs are, speaking of Mustangs, the Mustangs are doing everything they can to avoid losing or deep men getting some uh, big plays on the kickoff return. Mustangs have been kicking it short on the losing or in that play, trying to pitch it back to the return man, still not as effective. Mustangs doing a good job of keeping the big plays away from the special teams. Here on first down, looks like you may have a motion penalty against losing her. And it looked like that was a delay of game call. It'll bring up first down and 15 now for losing her. And losing her on the run right gets nothing. Britt Nerman out there, Sparza out there, Koppel out there, Bruce Robinson out there. Tire Mustangs backfield read that one beautifully and looks like there is a flag on the play as well. Let's see what that call is from the official. And it looks like it's going to be against Lusinger. And it looks like the official has waved the penalty off. So it will be just second down. Lusinger got three yards on the play, so second down and 12. And on the running play left, again, the Mustangs backfield doing a great job. Eric Esparza again, and Bruce Robinson again involved on those plays. As well as Nicholas Churkow. Going to bring up third down now at about eight. Two minutes and 56 seconds left to go here before halftime. As you can see, the final preparations starting to uh, come down now for homecoming. The cars are on the field. The uh, banners are on the field. Melvin the Mustangs on the field. Bill Favre's on the field. Everyone is getting ready to join the field for the celebration of homecoming. Meantime, losing on the field is Running the QB keeper and Huffman, the quarterback, able to get a nice gain on the play. It's going to be close. He's right where the first down marker is. I don't believe he got it. Looks like he's going to be just shy. No, he did get it cut just enough. First and 10 Olympians. And Taylor on the carry. 
again right at the marker. They were aiming for those markers. I think he did get it on that one. As Lusinger's coach is excited about something going on there. I don't. Maybe he's looking forward to the uh, halftime homecoming preparation as well. As he is definitely excited out there. Perhaps he's in there discussing with his team his vote for tonight's homecoming opinion team. Speaking of votes, first on Tuesday coming up, we have another major election. Of course, this would be the second presidential election. Uh, Jeremy, you and I have been announcing through with the Mustangs football action. Let's see if this one comes down to Florida. Although they say Ohio may be the key state this year. Olympians on a second down and six play. Tackled, got about four yards on the play. It's going to be up third down and two. Of course, also some interesting ballot measures. Jeremy, you've been uh, studying any of the uh, ballot measures? Oh, yes, I have, Chris. There's a couple of gambling measures that are kind of interesting, as well as a health care measure. And stem cell research, of course, uh, Christopher Reeves, famed actor and Superman, uh, unfortunately passed away recently, was a big supporter of the stem cell research initiative. Be interesting to see if that passes. Meantime on the field, losing her on a first down and 10 play, gets about one yard. Justin Reese involved on that play. Losing her takes the timeout as we're here towards the end of the second quarter. Mustangs leading this contest 24 14. Fifty-one seconds remain. Mustangs offense has been on fire in this contest, but they have given up some big plays. Losing her pretty much riding the big plays. Already three plays of over 50 yards or more. And losing her keeps it on the ground. Losing her now trying to inch away and not able to get anywhere. Justin Reese with a big throwdown. Huge play on defense for the Mustangs. Justin not giving up anything as he has definitely stepped up his leadership on the defensive side for the Mustangs. Justin, the 6'2", 245-pound senior, has been huge. Speaking of huge, big hit by the Mustangs as Lusinger's quarterback just unleashes the ball in the back of the end zone. Almost came up with the reception, but the ball falls incomplete thanks to the big hit by, I believe, that was Nick Turkow coming on the uh, right side blitz. Fourth down now for the Olympians. They are going for it. Come back rough and back to pass. He's scrambling. He's trying to find room. I don't think he has the room. He is knocked out of bounds. I don't think he got it. Let's double check what the officials say. J.D. Casillo coming in with the big hit as he gets a nice little uh, spot on the rear by uh, defensive coordinator Ray Lee. Is in congratulations. And in fact, he's short. That's going to give the ball over to the Mustangs. Mustangs will down the ball. Quarterback Eric Esparza taking the knee. That's going to end this first quarter of, I'm sorry, first half of action. Your Mustangs lead this contest 24-14. Hold on, fans. we got great homecoming action coming to you right now. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Homecoming, 
Second half action, your Mustangs leading this contest 24 to 14. Of course, German Air would also like to extend our congratulations to Micah Makawa, who of course is the current ASB president, and George Chen, who has play, plays the violin and in fact performed with the South Bay Youth Orchestra and setting music in history this summer in Austria and Italy as part of a college group. Congratulations to both the homecoming king and queen of 2004. Now back to exciting Mustang football action. I believe, Jeremy, we have some out of town scoreboard Bay League action. Jeremy, what is going on in this ever tight Bay League? Well, Chris, over at the Seahawk Bowl in Redondo, the Seahawks are leading West Torrance. 13 to 7 and over in the peninsula south torrance game 
It's a tight one with South Torrance having a seven to six lead. And remember, the Bay League scoreboard is brought to you by fanspointofview.com. And there is the kickoff to the second half of action. Fair catch called by the Mustangs, Stuart Sackowick. Mustangs will take over first down and 10 with the ball spotted at the 31, I'm sorry, the 34 yard line. Quarterback Eric Esparza under center. Drops back and heads off and met immediately by the losing your defense. This is of course Britton Ehrman. Britton with two rushing touchdowns in the first half. Jeremy, Mustangs, of course, lead this contest, but what was the biggest story to you in the first half? Well, Chris, all of that homecoming preparation is what really stuck out to me in the first half as we saw those Mustangs getting prepared for that fine halftime presentation. Brent Nurban with the pink carry on the right hand side gets the ball just to about midfield, about two yards shy at the 48 yard line. Mustangs now on first down and 10. And Stuart Stackwick stopped immediately. As far as what impressed me on the field during the first half, I'd have to say it was the fine offensive line and blocking done by Alex Probosco in the offensive line leading the way for Britt Nertman. Speaking of Britt Nertman, he and his 5.6 yards per carry just got about six on that one, helping his average out, that's for sure, as Britton is having another stellar game. Even Melvin the Mustang liked that carry as the Mustangs now on second down and four. And it's the misdirection play, but there's a fumble. Britton Ehrman comes up with the ball, dropped, dropped the uh, handoff attempt from Eric Esparza. That's gonna bring up fourth down now for the Mustangs. Mustangs forced to punt with the ball right at the 50 yard line. And it's a great kick by Joe Houston. And the ball stops almost dead exactly where it landed on the uh, kickoff. Kind of a strange bounce. Almost no bounce at all, really. Losinger will take over first and 10 now here in the third quarter with your Mustangs leading this contest 24 to 14. As we get a good glimpse of defensive coordinator Ray Lee, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Ray makes as Losinger did come up with some big plays on offense. And speaking of big plays on offense, straight run up the middle. That's Taylor on the carry, gets to just shy of midfield. Got about 22 yards on the carry. First and 10 Olympians. And looks like that may be Taylor again. In fact it is, Taylor gets about seven yards on that carry. It's gonna bring up second down and three now for Losinger. Let's go defense! Losinger's quarterback Ruffin sends man in motion. Drops back and hands off again to Taylor. Taylor really coming out with the big first, or first uh, drive here of the second half. Finally knocked down. Good tackle out there by Stuart Stackwick and Britton Ehrman, but unfortunately, it comes after a big 22-yard gain. First and 10, Losinger. As Losinger is inching closer and closer to getting uh, some points on the board here. Finally brought down at the 11-yard line. After a nine-yard gain there, it's just shy of the first down marker. Losinger's quarterback Ruffin hands off to Taylor. JC Taylor on the uh, right hand side gets about four on the play. 
that's going to be good enough for the first down. It's going to be first down and goal. Ball spotted at the just shy of the five yard line. But there is a holding penalty against losing. You're definitely not what they need at this point of the game. They actually had some momentum going on their side. But that penalty will set them back. Instead of being at the six, they're at the 20. Now it's the pitch to Taylor. Got some nice yardage. Got the ball to about the 12 yard line. Losing now, Ruffin hands off to Taylor again. Taylor, Taylor gets to the six. And gets the first down with that carry. Mustangs got a break on the uh, the holding penalty, but the defense not able to take advantage of it as losing her marched right back in two plays and got that first down back again. First and goal now, losing her from the six. We are seeing nothing but a strong dose of J.C. Taylor on this uh, possession for the losing your Olympians as the Olympians have marched all the way down now to the four yard line. Second down play coming up, second and goal. And it's a QB keeper, Ruffin has some room and he is in for the touchdown. Ruffin, of course, uh, we had a block in the back. Mustangs looking for it, but unfortunately the block came after Ruffin had already danced into the end zone. That gives the touchdown to the Olympians. That makes the score right now 24 to 20. Let's see what happens on the two-point conversion attempt. It's a handoff and diving for the pylons and getting in is losing or is running back. Nice job on the two-point conversion to dive in. That was Tyrone De DeBose. DeBose, the uh, big senior, 230-pound senior, dives in, gets the two-point conversion. That makes this score all of a sudden 24 to 22, Jeremy. Mustangs last week saw a second half collapse against Peninsula. Are we going to see that same kind of collapse tonight? Or can the Mustangs rebound and take, retake control of this contest? Well, Chris, I have confidence in that Mustang offensive line blowing open holes for Britt Nertman. As we see Britt Nertman with a nice run up the left-hand side, getting a first down. That's a great response by the Mustangs offensive line. Loser finally gets some momentum and gets into the end zone. What's the best way to respond with the big gain of your own? First and 10, Mustangs. Britton Newman again using straight power as he had four losing your defensive linemen all over him, but he somehow pounds his way forward, gets about four on the play, it's going to be up second down and six for the Mustangs. Come back to Sparza again. To Britt Nerman. Britton brought down immediately. Sparza now on a third down play. Hands off to Britton again, and Britton again powers his way forward for a Mustang first down. Double receiver set for the Mustangs. Mustangs for the first time tonight going to the air and it works for a touchdown. Ian Wadler on the left hand side in for the score. Yeah, Chris, they set up this play all night as the Mustangs have not attempted one pass until that pass attempt and Musinger was expecting run and Ian Wadler was wide open. Touchdown Mustangs. Great job by the tight end Wamler who now has three touchdowns on the season and has emerged as a definite weapon at the tight end position. Joe Houston on the point out attempt is good. Mustangs get some momentum right back in this favor. The score now is 31 to 22 with only two minutes left to go here in the third quarter. 
reminds me of another Mustang tight end back in the day, the Claw, Scott Letourneau, who dominated the tight end position back in the 1990s. Must, I'm sorry, losing her on the return now. Stopped nicely by the Mustangs. Of course, Ian Waller now has eight receptions on the season. 169 yards and a whopping 24.1 yards per reception. That last play was right around that same yardage, so he's definitely going to be above uh, 20 yards per reception. Has definitely come up with some big plays, including that touchdown that gives the momentum back to the Mustang side. They lead this contest 31-22. As the losing her now on a second down and nine situation. And it's quarterback Ruffin on the keeper. And he is driven and thrown backwards. Great job by the Mustangs defense to stop his board momentum. Bruce Robinson involved on that one. Yeah, Chris, Bruce roughed up Ruffin on that play. Throwing him back. Ruffin back to pass now. On the scramble, he's looking in the middle. He keeps it. Finally brought down. Steven Renato out there involved on that tackle. And that play is going to end the third quarter. Your Mustangs lead 31 to 22, and we'll be right back. Remember fans to log on to fanspointofview.com, the website where you can find out more about your favorite professional athletes. And remember fans, you can also order your favorite sports memorabilia all on fanspointofview.com. And welcome back to the fourth and final quarter. Your Mustangs, after finally getting a little momentum back on their side, lead this contest 31 to 22. Lee Singer now with the ball is going to try to see if they can get back on the scoreboard and make this game any closer. Mustangs, of course, will be fighting to keep this contest at least where it's at. Second down and five play for Losinger as after this play, it's trying to see if we can get some more out of town scoreboard action from the Bay League. Three down and three coming up. All right, Chris, over to Redondo. The Seahawks are starting to pull away 26 to seven against West Torrance. And over in the South Torrance Peninsula game, it's South Torrance up 14 to six over the Panthers. All right, losing her now. Ruffin on the handoff on a big third down play. Justin Reese was not gonna let that one go anywhere. Bruce Robinson also involved as the Mustangs defense comes up with a huge play. Fourth down and four now for the Olympians. Irving P3C for the Mustangs. Olympians forced to punt. Here early in the fourth quarter, Mustangs leading this contest 31 to 22. And hit immediately. Almost a little surprise, there's not a flag on that one. As boy, Britt Nerman almost as soon as he caught the ball. In fact, I think the flag, there it is, flag was thrown. You gotta believe that one's gonna be against Olympians as Boy, as soon as Britt Herman caught the ball, he had a man wrapped all the way around him. Now hold a second here. 
Is the official calling this against the Mustangs? Looks like, oh, no, he did call that against the Olympians. They're going to re-punt the kick. And oh, a high snap taken by the Olympians punter. And he is running and finally knocked out of bounds. But let's check that spot because he got pretty darn close to the marker. And Cheshire Mustangs take over on downs. First down and 10, Mustangs. And oh, Britton Nerman is hitting the backfield immediately on the first down play. That was Sione and Ke Kalia, the uh, running back, also linebacker for the Olympians coming up with the big hit. There's a three yard loss on the play, second down and 13 now for the Mustangs. And it's a play action fake. Hit as he released the ball was quarterback. And looks like there's a flag also on the play. As the attempt was for Ian Waller. Of course, that was quarterback Eric Esparza. He got hammered as he released the ball. The penalty is in the backfield against the Olympians. That would be an automatic first down for the Mustangs and a definite huge blow to Lusinger's chances in this contest. Mustangs now with the ball on the 41 yard line, first down and 10 here in the fourth quarter. Esparza back to pass again, going deep and oh, just overshooting his intended target. Looked like that one may have been Wandler again. It was either Ian Wandler or Kevin Kelly. Pass does fall incomplete, however, second and N10 Mustangs. The time is a handoff straight up the field. Britt Newman with the 13 yard burst right up the middle of the field. Nothing tricky on that play. That's just straight offensive line dominance. First down and 10 Mustangs. Mustangs trying to cap this game off. They lead 31 to 22 here in the fourth quarter. And Esparza on the play action fake, on the uh, option play right actually, kept the ball himself, scrambled forward. Looks like he may have gotten another Mustangs first down. In fact, he did. Got about 12 on the play, first and 10 Mustangs. Mustangs with plenty of momentum and already in Joe Houston field goal position. QB keeper works only about one yard on the play. Stopped nicely by losing her. Macalo on the stop for the Olympians. Second down and I'll call it second down and eight for the Mustangs. Esparza under center. And it's a handoff to Britt Nerman who has an opening right up the middle of the field and is stopped just shy of the goal line. Got down to the one yard line. It's gonna be first down and goal Mustangs. Mustangs with a chance to finalize this game. And it's quarterback Esparza. He looks like he may have got for a good enough push to get into the end zone. And in fact, he did touchdown Mustangs. And the point after attempt is up and good. That's scoreboard Mustangs now 38 to 22 here with 648 left to go with tonight's contest. Mustangs now with a commanding lead. All they have to do is hold out now for six minutes plus and this game is theirs. Using it on the return. Gets about 12 on the return. It's gonna bring up first and 10, losing her. Losing her now in a desperation situation with just over six minutes left to go. And the Mustangs now with the commanding 16 point lead. Losing her will be forced to go to the air, which is something that they're not accustomed to. As they keep it on the ground on the first play and get nowhere. 
that serves the Mustang's purpose. They can do that all night if they want to, because all that does is eat up the clock. Losing now, now they go to the air. And looking deep and looking left. And oh, the officials throw the flag. Bad call, I don't like that call at all. As Stuart Sackerwick with the coverage, the ball frankly was underthrown significantly by Hawthorne's, I'm sorry, losing his quarterback, Ruffin. Stewart really had no, uh, no chance to make a play on that one but get stuck with the penalty, first down and 10, now losing her, losing her going deep again, and Mustangs with all sorts of coverage. Triple coverage on the deep man, looks like losing her is going to just drop straight back and throw it as far as they can. Ball dead, fall incomplete, second down and 10 now for the Olympians. Ruffin back to pass again, and again just throws Throw short that time, throw sidelines. And complete on the sideline. Nice uh, catch by uh, by the Olympians receiver, right? Tiptoeing the sidelines on that play. We're here in the fourth quarter. Mustangs leaving this contest 38 to 22. M only minutes left to go in the contest. Olympians now on the pitch play right. Looks like running back Taylor was able to get enough for the first down. In fact, he did, he got just enough. First and 10 Olympians, but time is not in their favor. They need to get something on the scoreboard quickly if they still want a chance at this ball game. Handoff this time on the left-hand side for the Olympians. Got about seven on the play. That was Kalia on the uh, carry on the left-hand side. Looks like we may be getting some final scores in other Bay League action. We'll try to keep you updated here in the next, next uh, play or two. And oh, almost picked off. Trevor Koppel had a chance. Ball just through his arms. Great coverage nonetheless. Ball does fall incomplete. That would have been Trevor's first interception of the season if he had come up with it. Either way, it still works out as a good defensive play. And the Olympians keep it on the ground. And two. Running game is not fooling anybody at this stage. Defense down with the huge play. Man in motion for the Olympians, and the Olympians will take a timeout. They want to discuss this play. Meantime, Jeremy, do we have any scores coming in from other Bay League action? Any finals going on? Well, Chris, we have one final right now over in the Peninsula South Torrance game. Wow, Peninsula came up with a great fourth quarter comeback, scoring 21 fourth quarter points to defeat South Torrance 27 to 21. We'll be back with a Redondo final coming up in just a few moments. Huge fourth down and two play. Now this could be it for the contest. Losing on the pitch play. Mustangs have this one red and oh, just able to sneak outside is Taylor. Mustangs had that play red and stopped dead in the backfield. But Taylor somehow manages to escape the rushing defensive uh, outside forces for the Mustangs. Got the first down. First and 10 now losing her. Again, it's Taylor on the carry. Taylor not able to escape that time. Eric Esparza with the big hit. Said, you're not going anywhere, little man. You're going down to the ground, and that's where you're going to stay. Yeah, Chris, and then we see a nice display of sportsmanship by Eric Esparza by helping up the losing or running back. Even gave him a little pat on the chest for good luck. Nice sportsmanship by quarterback slash linebacking feed on Eric Esparza. 
And Ruffin back to pass. He's rolling right. He's looking right. Now he's looking middle. Now he doesn't know where to look. He throws middle, and it's intercepted. Stuart Stackerwick with the pick. Big play by the Mustangs defense. That one should seal it off. Jeremy, what happened? Well, Chris, it appears that the quarterback, Ruffin, just couldn't handle the pressure there as he tried to make something happen when there was nothing there. Throw in the interception. Great pressure by J.D. Casilli as well as Justin Reese. Both guys were right up in the face of Ruffin. He knew he had nowhere to go running the ball. He tried to force something in the air. Stackwick was there to make the pick. That's going to be turnover on the interception. First down and 10 Mustangs. Mustangs now leading this contest 38 to 22. Basically going to run out the clock. We should see a couple running plays. Hopefully one first down, and that should be enough for quarterback Esparza to drop to his knee and run the rest of the clock out. This one should go in the way of the Mustangs. Meantime, let's check in on, on other Bay League finals, see what's going on, and what should be an even tighter Bay League matchup now that the Mustangs should walk away with the victory. Yeah, Chris, we have a final over Redondo. The Seahawks continue to dominate the Bay League with a 32-7 win over West Torrance as their record goes to 7-1 and 3-0 in the Bay League. Esparza with the QB keeper right up the middle. Timeout on the play, timeout by Losinger. Of course, they're trying to save as much time as they can, but with only 1.16 left to go in this contest, and the Mustangs leading by 16 points, this one should be in the hands of the Mustangs. Yeah, Chris, and with the Mustangs winning tonight, the Bay League standings will look as follows. Redondo will be in first with a 3-0 record, followed by Maricosta and Peninsula tied for second at 2-0-1. And then we have the West Torrance Warriors, who Maricosta will face next week at one and two, followed by Losinger and South Torrance at 0 and three. Of course, uh, one other huge uh, game coming up in the Bay League next week will be the Redondo matchup. Jeremy, want to uh, preview that one? Yeah, Chris, Redondo is going to face off against Peninsula. And if uh, Peninsula can be defeated by Redondo, that would set up a league championship game the final week of the season if Maricosta can defeat West Torrance also. So it's going to be a big week next week in the Bay League as Redondo will meet up against Peninsula and Maricosta will go travel to West Torrance High and hopefully set up a Bay League Championship the final week of the season at the Seahawk Bowl, a place where we never lost. Well, running back, Grit Nerman again with two touchdowns in tonight's contest as well as quarterback Eric Esparza showing not only can he run the ball as that QB keeper is a powerful play, but he also threw for a touchdown to Ian Wandler. Mustangs keep on rolling on offense. Offensive line dominating as usual. Mustangs win this contest by the score of 38 to 22. Big Bay League win for the Mustangs as they still keep their dream alive for first place. Yeah, Chris, and with that win, Maricosta's undefeated, or excuse me, win streak goes up to 24 games without a loss in Bay League play. Great job by the Maricosta offense and defense. Congratulations, Mustangs. I'm Chris Lee signing off along with Jeremy Sadowski, and we will see you next week.